Yes, and the uh, the winner was totally predictable from from the, the last couple of months. Sharon Firasua is dominant in women's long distance running at the minute. Well, she certainly is because she dominates the Oceania rankings at the moment. Quite a good clear two minutes over anybody else. She took out the 2015 event. But didn't finish actually 213 Bob at Wallace. Yeah, th that was um, that was before she rose to prominence. It was 2014 saw her come come to the fore. There we've got Sharon Firisua, Diana Matakali, and Celine Herzl from uh, New Caledonia. Herzl. Celine Herzl from New Cal. shot of our winner from earlier on today they were up bright and early the girls as well down here at Pullman at 6 a.m. start I set my alarm but unfortunately I woke at 1 o'clock 2 o'clock 3 o'clock 4 o'clock and then stayed awake until I had to get out of bed it's well, as anybody knows Bob uh, Bob Snow is a bit of a machine when it comes to track and field <laughs> So here she is, our bronze medalist, Celine Herzl, being invited to take her place on the podium. She uh, is a triathlete, I think, this yes, girl. She might have she got is. a bronze medal, I think, uh, from Moresby. Yes, she did get a bronze medal in Moresby in the triathlon. Uh, many of the triathletes uh, from New Caledonia tr try their hand at the distance running. They've got the stamina. Matakali then. Diana Matakali. So it was a great one too for Solomon. She's the normal second place getter behind... Sharon Kurosua. Always difficult for somebody that uh, is in a situation like this, born in the period when there happens to be just somebody so preeminent in your preferred events. Yes, it's a, it's a pity, but, and there was another one, um, Hilda Albani, but she's left the scene. They, c they normally could have gone one, two, three. Good tradition of long distance running in the Solomon Islands. Well, defending the championship she won in 2015, currently heads the Oceania rankings in this event. That's Oceania rankings as well, let me remind you. Here's our champion here in Port Vila. In the first medal awarded at the Pacific Mini Games in track and field. It temporarily rockets the Solomon Islands to the top of the table. But well, well, given what they've done in uh, weightlifting as well, they're relying very heavily on their women's team in the solos. They are. I, and, and one of the great supporters of the Solomon Island lifters was Sharon Furasua. She was there every day.
So well, a shot there of our winners in the women's 10,000 meters, as I said, it was the first medal decided in track and field here at uh, Villa. That lets us well and truly know that athletics has started. On the, on the infield, just near the medal ceremony, you've got all of the women long jumpers deciding who goes on and who has got to leave the field. Only the top eight will continue. You can see them to the left of the flagpoles in a little group getting the good or the not so good news. High jump is still continuing off to our right. And the hurdles are slowly being put out around the field. 10 hurdles for each lane around this 400 meter track there was one games that i will not mention where uh, the second lot of hurdles in the women's 400 hurdles was never ever put out and we couldn't understand why they ran such a brilliant time they they only went over nine lots of hurdles i'm sure you can remember that brendan I think I can. <laughs> we won't mention it it was an embarrassing moment in and Pacific history. And <laughs> ambulant power of javelin throwers just about to get ready for their competition. They've got a very good uh, a guy from Terry Washington from uh, New Caledonia who's done very well in Pacific Games and also he's picked up uh, gold medals in uh, the Arafura Games. The New Caledonia have a very, very good para uh, sporting history led by uh, their dominant uh, Thierry Sibon, the guy who got uh, three gold medals at the Sydney Paralympics, all with world records. And he's here. He's here for the seated uh, shot put. High jump continuing just in front of the javelin throwers as well, deep into the men's competition. We're into the final stands of that now as well. And the girls just getting their briefing down here as well. The women in the women's long jump. And we're not too far away, as Bob says, far from the first of these two heats in the men's four uh, by 400 or 400 uh, hurdles. 400 hurdles. Now, we've got uh, a lot of the hurdles out, but there's a, a big hurdles team down just to the left of us here. And they, you know, I haven't seen uh, hurdles number nine and ten or eight, nine, and ten being put out. Well, they're pretty critical. Ah, another medal presentation. That's the reason. And we might also have uh, another slight interruption before the hurdles resumes. I'd say this Coleman Stadium is going to erupt in just a moment because uh, it's scheduled to honour the winners of the men's 10,000 metres. First and second going to Vanuatu early this morning here at Corman Stadium and what a day Bill was for this uh, team from Vanuatu sizable team as well well represented in many of the events here and as we were saying earlier on with Bob uh, many of them uh, getting the benefit of uh, Chinese national coaches some traveling to China for the last five six months others staying here in a special training camp Indeed, it is going to be the men's 10,000 next up. So uh, stand by, Vanuatu. It's going to be a big day for you. Uh, they will stand by their man. Predictably, the crowd can see who's marching out, and they are incredibly happy. 
than they should be. I mean, this was just a sensational debut for this amazing, this revamped Vanuatu team. And if they should finish like this, as I say, I think it heralds some big things over the next four days, Bob. It really does. Yes, well, Sandy Oka in doing it in 2001 on that beautiful grass track in Norfolk Island. But now they've gone one better, a gold and a silver. Well, never before, as Bob says, in the 10K, they've gone anywhere near this. And we have to go back to 2001 for any medal in this competition for this team, for this country. So this is absolutely an historic occasion for Vanuatu. Not only that they win, but they finish 1-2 as well, and they break up a team of runners highly accomplished that uh, were expected to absolutely dominate this. And uh, Abikash Shalal, I just hope he's okay, because the, the reports we were getting was he was not in good shape when he got in here earlier on today. No, he was staggering all over the place. He looked as if he was close to collapse. Um, it was a bit distressing to watch him being so distressed. Considering he'd won the 2017 Oceania senior titles as well, yeah, he's that he should end like that here is just extraordinary, I think. Again, um, a lot of people have left their good form earlier in the year, but not these guys. They had their number one form when it counted. So Simbai Kaspar then is called up to accept uh, the plaudits of the crowd and his bronze medal. Simbai Kaspar has just finished an incredibly difficult and very heavy uh, PNG Games uh, schedule in Kimbe in West New Britain in Papua New Guinea. That only finished a week ago. So he's got to be careful that he doesn't over race. But the Vanuatu athletes, they haven't over raced. They've timed it perfectly. Well, so to our silver medalist then. Let's hope that it ushers in a new era of distance running in Vanuatu. They were great in the past. Then they went into a, into oblivion almost. And I'm on enough of part here. Yeah, and let's hope that they can now use this as an impetus to come back strongly. Simon Charlie of Vanuatu. And the crowd goes crazy. An absolute sleeper in terms of the stats, really. I mean, we had a lot on everybody else, but this guy just came from nowhere. We have no stats on any of the Vanuatu team. So they're all, anyone who's going to do well will all be a bolt from the blue. Mm -hmm. Well, this is totally brilliant. Ladies and gentlemen, please ride the National Anthem of Vanuatu. Service of the objective accomplished early this morning here at uh, Corman. Vanuatu said uh, it wanted to chase down seven gold medals during the course of the track and field competition here. And that was the first of them, bright and early this morning. An historic occasion. Never before has Vanuatu featured so prominently in a 10K event. And as I say, that they should finish 1 2 today. Quite amazing. As I said, I hope this ushers in a new era in 
athletics in Vanuatu and we will see hopefully the fruition of all this next year in May when Port Vila hosts the Melanesian Athletics Championships. Centerpiece of which will be this magnificent stadium as we uh, take you across now to the men's high jump. I presume that's Malakai Kaiwalu. Hundred and ten is his number. Oh no, there's this well, who's that left? One That's nine four. One nine four. This is Ronald Hurek from uh, PMG. He's a newcomer. He he's also a very good long jumper. It looks as if he's in in the fight for the medals with Malakai Kaiwalu. And Kaiwalu seemed to clear this height quite easily. The previous jump. Still a couple of field events continuing. The men's high jump here. And the women's long jump as well. <coughs> so those are our entrants. But uh, we're deep into the competition now. We're in fact into the second stanza. So a number of those high jumpers have gone. We now know the semi-finalists for the men's 100. Semi-final number one, Brandy Mento, Vanuatu, Colonio Rambrunru, Fiji, Wesley Logorava, Papua New Guinea, Kelvin Masoe, Samoa, Steve Lalton, Vanuatu, Tony Lameki, Fiji, Daisa Dagiago, Nauru, Dylan, Michel Villas from New Caledonia, and in the second semi-final, Jonah Harris, Nauru, Shupeng Abui, Samoa, Markley Simeon, Vanuatu, Aaron Powell, Fiji, uh, Nazmi Lee Marai, Papua New Guinea, David Alexandrine uh, from New Caledonia, Kupun Wisil from Papua New Guinea, and Joshua Jeremiah from Nauru. They are the 16 finalists that will go head semi-finalists that will go head to head shortly that's uh the semi first no semi-finals scheduled local time at 3:45, and it'll be the top three in each semi-final and the next two fastest quickest of those qualifiers today was kelvin Massal from uh, samoa Qualified in a time of 10.84. Second fastest was Wesley Longorova, Papua New Guinea, with a 10.86. Nobody else bettered the uh, 11 second mark. 11 second mark. And I'm now handing over to Brendan the result of the javelin. Bob, you do the honors. The the winner of the men's javelin with 63.73 meters was Donny Tuimaseve from Samoa. Second, Peter Tamani from Fiji, 62.15 meters. Third was Jack Nasawa from Vanuatu. And that's exactly the way we saw them. Unofficially, we had them in that order as you well. You certainly did, 60.98. And then Reuben Wilson from Vanuatu, 56.25. So there were 11 finalists, but Donny Tuimaseve from Samoa, 63.73. Samoa wasn't expecting that gold, and they're quite willing to accept it with a big smile on their face. Don't forget, they will be holding the next games in 2019 in Apia. So back then down to the men's high jump. Well, we've just been updating you on some of the results that have been coming in.
As we said today, there's going to be nine medals decided here. Two of those have gone already. We'll see in the 10,000. The first of these field events is coming through. And just repeating that Samoa have done the honours there. Cooling down a little bit here, Bob, at the moment. Yes, and the the wind looks as if it's keeping things quite pleasant, although for the sprinters it's now turned from a negative wind into a positive wind. It will be behind them, which means the long jumpers will be jumping into a slight wind, slight headwind. I noticed some of the the women long jumpers oh here we go with the oh yes that looks like peniel richard a very distinctive haircut he's brought that all the way from texas it must be getting up near two meters by now on the in the high jump Again, Bob, just having a quick look at that uh, javelin throw as it's announced to the crowd here that uh, Vanuatu should get into a bronze medal position there through Nasawa. Again, I would suggest bronze you. and fourth. That's uh, uh, th this is groundbreaking for them. Once again, back down to the high jump. Is that Moses Foliaki? Looks like it to me, Foliaki. Yes, well, it's definitely a Tongan. Yes, it is. It's Foliaki for sure. It yes, is. yes. Nice clear there. That looks like Malakai Kawalu. It is indeed Kawalu safe then over that height. Uh, maybe it's high 190s at this stage. So it looks like we've got some starters out on the 400s. That'd be the 400 hurdles, first heat. Tui. Tamathui, Lurkin, Potafili, and Japheth from Vanuatu are our runners getting ready. Now these start in the men's 400 hurdles. Now these guys don't want to use too much energy, but the big problem is if you slow down, you lose your rhythm completely. Well, it's all about rhythm and technique yes, yes. and getting that stepping rate right between these hurdles. Absolutely. Remember, there are 10 yes. hurdles between them and the finish line. And really what they want to do is reduce the number of steps they take between those hurdles. And so if you see corrections or changes, you know that basically the rhythm that they set out, gee, that Lurkin looks good. He's just running through his first couple of barriers over there in the distance behind the uh, men's high jump. He is good. Oh, he's Ephraim he's, Lurkin. He's, he's a super hurdler. We, we first got an, an idea that he was going to be good at the the trials for the Papua New Guinea team for the 2015 games he didn't make it through to the final three sadly but he was one to watch and the following year he broke out and this year has just dominated so just getting set then for a start in the first of a couple of uh, heats in the men's 400 hurdles right down in front of the start line not too far away I and we're going to have to yeah and moses foliaki that's a uh, pui okay. there so we've got a couple of tongans in the field here hurdles Tom is one of their strengths tamathui as well I'd be very interested to see how vanuatu goes in this as well bob lurk i mean it's such a technical sport i mean really if, if he's got his technique right this um uh, tamathui 
then uh, really he could be a bit of a ha he could be a bit of a handful. And he's got Lurkin right on his outside as well. So if he just latches on to him, Fata Philly, Jeff Heff. And they're getting ready to announce the finalists of the women's shot. And this is the, the great young 17-year-old Ashley Bologna about to be introduced. see the staggered start for the men in the 400 hurdles not too far away down on the track not too far away from the start I think the high jump has just been brought to a temporary halt while the guys go around in the back there so 400 of course one circuit of the beautiful Corman track here completely refurbished for this event some considerable number of Vatu spent on it and the People's Republic again stepping up and uh, assisting everybody here, Bob. Yes, um, it, I was here in 93, and then again in 98 for the Oceania Grand Prix, then in 2001 for the Oceania Cup. Uh, but the stadium was looking a little bit sad then with uh, earthquake damage, uh, and it's just wonderful to see it coming back to life. So MC here at the ground just about to uh, turn everybody's attention to the start of the men's four by 100 hurdles or 400 hurdles I should say as once again we go back to the high jump. That was uh, Peniel Richard missing at that height. Seems a little relaxed. So in the background you can see the hurdles there. So standing by for a start then in the men's 400 hurdles. As the high jump continues, the women's shot put continues, the para javelin continues. It's such a busy day, Bob. And the women's shot put is really is going to be exciting. But we might not be able to see too much of that. On the track, they're going up to the start in the men's 400 hurdles. There they are, getting set. So it's Pui, Tonga in two. Tamathui, Vanuatu in three. Lurkin in four, our favorite. Fotafili, the second the Tongans, is in five. And Japheth Vanuatu is in six. Keep an eye on lane number four, Lurkin. Ephraim Lurkin. There's number seven. Indeed, that's uh, Dico Japheth. Looks like they're racing as well. They got away to a very quiet start. But uh, Ephraim at the moment, Lurkin traveling extremely well. Lurking, oh, he's very lucky to have saved that. That might have been Tamathui, the Vanuatu runner. On the inside, it's Fotofili beginning to gobble them up down the back straight as well. Lurkin now just beginning to find his stride and beginning to lead them. Here, the all-important seventh and eighth barrier. The big gorilla beginning to sit on their back. Style is difficult, but Lurkin doing it all. Got them all covered at the moment. Looks like Fotofili on the inside. Tamathui is there. Vanuatu as well. Turi, Turi on the inside. Lurkin is too good. Here he comes. Fotofili beginning to make a bit of a run of it. Tui there. Tamathui. But no doubting our winner in this first heat. Ephraim Lurkin, PMG, too strong, Bob. Oh, absolutely. And he was cruising. He was cruising. Um, but uh, 53 seconds. 53 seconds. Yeah, that's that. That's cruising. He's he's capable of going a second and a half faster. But the second place getter, it's a seasonal best for him. So Tui from Tonga coming over the line second. Tamathui lucky to survive that. Actually, he had a big knock going around maybe barrier number three, number four. Now we're looking forward to seeing the old man of the hurdles. 
So the second of our heats, not too far away. Heat two, not too far away in the men's 400 hurdles. First, second, and third in each in each uh, heat, plus the next two fastest. Foliaki will be in two. There he is, Noam Boino in lane number three. Rarasia representing Fiji is in four. Okuso Samoa in five. Yalesi Vanuatu is running in six. And Inabe, who's been around, running out in lane number seven today. They're running to eliminate three people. So eight, eight of the 11 will go through. But if you go too slowly and uh, you can lose your rhythm, you can crash into hurdles, you can make a real mess of it. As Bob was saying, as we see, uh, Lurkham easily won winning that first one. I mean, Lurkham's form this year has just been fantastic. Oceania Championships. Yeah, he won, uh, won a major event in um, the Bangkok Open. So Mo and Boino in this one. There he is in the PNG colors, but uh, got quite a uh, heart pull here into Vila, this man. Lives here now. Yes. Saw him at the Sydney Olympic Games in 2000. He's Ran been... a 51.38 there. Went on to Manchester, did a 51.03 at the uh, Commonwealth Games in 2002. Did a 50.37 in Melbourne at the Commonwealth Games there. 51.40 New Delhi Commonwealth Games. Went on to Sydney in 14, did a 52.56. I mean, the guy is just so consistent, Bob, over such a long time. The career is well, just incredible. Well, he holds the Pacific record, 50.37, done at the Melbourne Commonwealth Games. He's the only Pacific Island athlete ever to represent Oceania at the World Cup. He did that in Madrid in 2002. He's done it all. But now he is a, a very generous 38 years of age, and the question is, can he hold off the young pretender? That's Ephraim Lurkham. Well, we saw Lurkham win the first heat earlier on today, and uh, a little bit later on in this meet, we'll have the two of them come together in the final of men's uh, 400 hurdles, and it should be an absolute beauty. Perhaps the handing over of the mantle. Yes, uh, forgive me, Millie, and also Mo, and I think Ephraim will win this one, but it will be wonderful for you to go out with a really great time in, in the 52s and possibly even fight on to see if you can get in the Commonwealth Games team for Gold Coast next year. There's Yanabe, closest to us. He's running out of lane number seven. Mom Boino just being uh, introduced to the crowd, giving a big warm welcome. Barasaya next to him is running in lane number four. Akuso from Samoa is in five. Gelasi Vanuatu in six. Wait for the roar for this guy. And there it is. And Yanambe are in lane number seven, PNG. So two PNG runners. Tonga, Fiji, Samoa represented as well. The second of two 400 hurdles finals here. Three uh, fastest in each heat plus the two next best go through to the gold medal showdown in the men's 400 hurdles. Closest to us here. You know, he's got some good 400 times, as Bob was explaining. Yes, well, he's, he needs the 400 for the heptathlon. It's the, the fifth event on day one of the heptathlon. For the decathlon. Yeah, oh, decathlon, yes. Sorry. So, yes. Yanabe, closest to us. And Galese, around the bird. Around the bend, I should say, Kuso, Larasia, Boino in three, and Foliaki, Tonga on the inside lane, furthest from us. They're starting again, and it's a very quiet start, a little bit uh, 
difficulty here, but uh, Borno, it looks like that somebody's gone already. Foliaki from Tonga has missed the start, I think. He has not gone anywhere. Meantime, Borno has got this entire field covered, and he's beginning to make a move down the back straight. You can hear the Vanuatu fans get behind this great PNG champion. Beginning to make his move now, and this is the all-important seventh and eight hurdles. It's where the big gorilla begins to sit on the shoulders and style and form is so important. And this guy, Boino, he is such a hurdler. He is totally brilliant. And I tell you what, the battle between he and the young pretender lurking tomorrow is going to be sensational. Oh, he's out to prove something. There is no doubting our winner here. Moen Boino, home and by a mile. Back then to our next runners, it's going to be Rorosia just over Gelasi, the PNG's perennial champ, the great Moen Boino. 52-4-4, it's his fastest time of the year, I think. Certainly faster than he's been running lately. Wow, Bob, this could be interesting. Uh, it will be. There he is, Moen Boino. Been a great ambassador for PNG Sport, hasn't he? PNG Track and Field. Oh yes. Watch the inside lane here. The Tongan. Not sure whether he missed the start. Didn't hear the start. There's no gun here. I didn't hear the gun. Well, but it, the Tongan gone. Well, well, it could be that he prefers to maintain his strength for the high jump. Well, could be. But why he would enter and get up to the start, I have no idea. But Foliaki, nowhere near it. And this is where Boino just runs away. Hurdles seven and eight, where really it gets extremely difficult. You can see the others beginning to tie up already, but Boino's running and hurdling technique. Look at the difference between what he does and the others. Yes. And this is the difference between him and other hurdlers in this event in the Pacific. Oh, he knows what he's doing. His uh, older brother, John Boino, was um, a very, very good high jumper. When I was in the Port Moresby Association, he was there. Now I think... John Boino is with long bowls, so that's a, a slightly different move. <laughs> I wonder whether Moen is going to go to lawn, uh, lawn bowls like his brother. I can't see it somehow. So we're just looking for a start list for the uh, semis of the men's 100. got to remove all of the hurdles and we go back it looks like we're gonna get across to the high jump for a little while to see if we can bring you up to speed on what's happening over there meantime the women's long jump continues I've got no idea what the height is but anything that uh, <laughs> taller than the officials is seriously <laughs> challenging some 800 meter runners coming up yes well, well they're, they're due at 3 p.m and it's after three already so uh, the women the women's are uh, this will be a fascinating one Vanuatu getting ready for a takeoff on the uh, women's long jump two eight one
So our next track event will be the women's 800 meters. Two laps of the field. And again, I'm very interested to see how Vanuatu is uh, going to be running this one. There's a run then from Fiji. And the women's 800 meters not too far away from the start. The 800 will be very interesting because we've got a whole lot of good New Caledonian runners, about two minutes 22, two minutes 23, but they're young, they're keen and uh, they could run out of their skin. We've got a couple of Papua New Guineans about two, two uh, minutes, 20 seconds. The fastest this year has been Poro Gahakabe, um, but she's been doing mainly cross country and half marathon running uh, for the last two or three months. So the big question mark is, is the big question is what will team Vanuatu come up with after their stay in China? So here are the starters then. Jenny Albert from Papua New Guinea and Esther Thomas from Vanuatu just being introduced to the crowd now. start in the women's 800 meters this is a final racing in the women's 800 meters new caledonia well represented three runners vanuatu likewise as well papua new guinea well there plus guam bob uh, you like the png runner here well uh, uh, speaking to team png they seem to think jenny albert is the one better prepared uh, we know the fastest has been uh, Poroga Hakave, but that was back when she was doing a track season, not a half marathon and cross country season. So at the moment, however, it looks like PNG and Vanuatu just disputing the lead here. Vanuatu seemingly got uh, things under control at the moment. Yeah, well, that's, that's good. Um, Valentine Hello was a 100 meter, 200 meter, 400 meter runner, and it makes good sense to then go up to the 800. Well, Valentin Hello leading at the moment. Vanuatu leading at the bell lap. Beginning to make a little bit of a move is Polo Gahakave in the longer hair. But at the moment, we thought that Vanuatu might run a little bit of a team tactic here. They seem to be doing it. New Caledonia, Guam seem to be well out of it at the moment. It's going to come down to Vanuatu versus Papua New Guinea. And at the moment, leading as she has all race, it's Massey, Pete Vanuatu. Raha Higiva just beginning to make a little bit of move down the back straight as well. Valentin is leading at the moment. Hello there, leading at the moment. 
Well, she laid it all on the line at the beginning of the race. Now she's got to see whether she can hold it right through to the end. She's doing a very good job of it. But Toro Gahakabe is closing. Gahakabe beginning to make a little bit of a move with about 200 to go. Here she comes. The PNG camp beginning to get behind their girl at the moment. It's Papua New Guinea, Vanuatu, Gohakave. She's worked extremely hard, but here comes a kick from PNG. Here comes Hello from Vanuatu, booting it away for a memorable gold medal. Vanuatu, can't believe it. Vanuatu won, PNG two. That is incredible. That is, it's not, I think it's almost down to Mary Del Capelu's national record. That's a very, very, very fast time. And Tinny in third place there as well for PNG. So Vanuatu doing the job she led from start to finish. Well, it's the reason why this is much more important than any of the men's results. This is the first time the women have been featured. Not since Mary Estelle have there been any good women athletes for Vanuatu. This is marking something special. Well, they set off with a plan again here, Bob, and that was basically go out and put some pressure on the yep. uh, fancy PNG runner. It she responded, well. but she didn't have enough in the tank to run it down in that last hundred. 216.76, that's close to the best in the Pacific this year. And I must say that the new Cal runners were blitzed very early in the piece. Yes. Here's the kick at the end. And uh, Valentin Hello just uh, holding on beautifully here as Porto Gahakabe comes up on her shoulder, but roared on by this big crowd. This boot away here at the end was just amazing. Gahakabe has to hold on for second, and Tinny PNG coming in for third. And Jenny Albert, I think, in fourth. But the goal, Vanuatu. That is going to upset the apple cart. So the second of their uh, goals now safely in their keeping. And if they've done it in the women, you can expect them to be highly competitive in the men's. But as I said, that is significant because for years Vanuatu's women, uh, the women in athletics in Vanuatu, have not been competitive. Now they are. They were with Mary Estelle Kapalu, but she did most of her training and comp uh, competing in Papua New Guinea. And quite, quite good. All all the medalists were sub two minutes 20 so it was a quality field now the men are doing their warm-up and who can say who's going to win the men's well how do you like the look of the fiji runner v veto ngamaki uh yeah, Gamaki. Gamaki, yeah. Um, he did very well in the under 18 championship in oceania uh, but I, uh, the last run I saw of his was not good. It was over two minutes. Well, you'd have to be thinking that maybe Serena, but you, you're also thinking um, Beddoes, aren't you? Cook Islands. Yes, Cook Islands, Beddoes. Uh, the, they were very confident that he was going to win. Be very, very confident. Well, a big field again, 15, and Godrilla as well. Uh, just noticed that name down there for um, New Caledonia. Yeah. Very famous uh, tennis name. Absolutely, yes. He's uh, running in uh, bid number 171 today, so they're just about to be introduced. in the 800 final getting set this could be a big day for the cook islands here if bob snow is right well they marky fiji running in one and uh Beddoes next to him in two serena vanuatu in three bob i like those guys well anil serena was a massive force several years ago we don't know whether he still is well he's he's been away to china so who can tell so he's come out of retirement so I get 
Yeah, Kusai is going to be representing Wallace and Fortuna. Toa Day from New Caledonia will run in uh, lane number six. Laos from Vanuatu as well. Better keep an eye on him. Well, I, I was very impressed with him as a 15-year-old, but he hasn't progressed as rapidly as I would have expected. But if he's been with the group in China, anything is possible. Shao from New Caledonia, Fanen from Wallace and Fatuna, Yamak from Papua New Guinea, Faisa Laufen from Solomon Islands, Orovo, Papua New Guinea, could be a handful as well for these guys, Simeon from Vanuatu, and Engod Driller, New Caledonia. Togogi looking pretty strong as well for PNG is down there. George Yamak has been sick for many, many months. He looks very, very, still looks quite frail, but he is a good, good 1500 meter runner primarily. But uh, I would say Alex Beddoes, uh, Petro, Beto Gomaki from uh, Fiji. And uh, Laos as well. I mean, if this uh, Vanuatu team has been prepared the way we think they have been, this guy could be a bit of a handful as well. He's running out of lane number seven. Be interested to see whether the new cows uh, run as a group or perhaps Vanuatu as well. Vanuatu got three runners in this group. New Caledonia likewise. See whether a little bit of tag team stuff will be happening there. And as I said, Ngod Drill, a very famous name in New Caledonia as far as tennis circles are concerned. Absolutely. Martin yeah. Orovo there, Papua New Guinea. Don't take your eyes off him. He also is very handy over this uh, 800 meters. They run in their lanes and then break across the backfield. That's Joe Simeon there, Vanuatu. Ngod Driller with the longer hair. Well, in all truth, we cannot make any comment on the, the Vanuatu runners because anything that they've been doing has been under the veil of secrecy. So I start then in the men's 800. And away again. And uh, they'll stay out in their lanes, but it looks like they've been called back, have they? Yes. Not quite sure what happened there. I hope nobody is disqualified for I breaking. I hope so as well because it's a little bit disconcerting without a starter's gun, Bob. It's well, an electronic start. They have a gun that they can hear, but it's very difficult for the people in the stadium to hear it. it caught it's us an by electronic gun. It's it not a standard one. It caught us by surprise last time. So we'll just have to monitor the situation down here because... Uh, we'll see if somebody gets a... A green card indicating all's okay, or a red caution. card, which means the sin bin. And that could have been the Vanuatu runner out there in uh, lane number 14, Joe Simeon. Did he break? I don't know. It's, uh, it's too big a field for me to see. But they've got lots of track umpires out there checking. Well, that'd be tragic if it is yes, a break. The, what will, the people will then go over with a red card to... Stand by. Looks like they're. Uh, that's 295. Uh, that's Joe Simeon Vanuatu. He's running. He's sharing a lane with the New Caledonian runners. That's uh, Jeremiah and Godrilla. So they're asking for quiet. Yes. Okay. Well, it looks like a technical hitch. Fortunately, no runners disqualified after that false start. Final of the men's 800 meters. Two circuits here at beautiful Corman. Wind beginning to die down late in the afternoon. Cooler running conditions. These guys can go hard if they need to. There's a start then in the men's 800. They'll run in their lanes for the first 250 meters and then they'll come across. Big move being made on the inside by the Fiji runner there. And obviously he's going to try and contend with the Vanuatu runners as well. And uh, really going to be very interesting to see whether team tactics play any part in this. 
I doubt whether they will. They didn't in the in the women's. We had one just went out and uh, Vieta Maki there has gone very hard from the start. That's the young Fiji runner. He's gone really hard trying to split this group up. Saw what the uh, Vanuatu runners did last time, maybe in the women's, and decided just to give it a little bit of a crack here. Vanuatu is dropped into second place, so it's Fiji leads. Vanuatu in second place. In second place is Serena. Up in the 13th, that's Aralvo from Papua New Guinea. Well, he's, he's heading for an incredibly fast time if he doesn't hit the wall. The bell lap is on. So at the moment then, it's Vetia Maki from uh, Fiji. Looks like uh, the boy from PNG, Aralvo, beginning to make a move down the back straight. Uh, you can see uh, the Fijian is treading water. He's beginning to tie up, and the rest of the field are beginning to make a move. Beddoes is there as well. He's looking quite good. He's gone over the top of the Vanuatu runner. They're going to pull in Vetiamaki from Fiji. Arovo is beginning to make his move. Vetiaki trying to make a stand, but he can't. Here comes Beddoes. Alex Beddoes from Cook Islands. This is going to be a historic occasion for him. Fiji beginning to come back at them again. He's found something special. At the moment, then, it's an incredible battle here between Arovo. Here comes Beddoes. Beddoes it is. Over the top of Orovo, Beddoes, Cook Islands, Orovo, and then Fiji, our early leader. But it's a big day for Cook Islands. And the man who Bob Snow predicted would win this has done the job. He's relegated the Vanuatu runners, and I think that early pace from Veti Miyaki might have upset the game plan for Vanuatu, Bob. Well, uh, it certainly upset the game plan for Fiji. <laughs> it was, he was heading for... Um, a very very fast time he did went through the first lap in 55 seconds that is just unless you're prepared for it he's a young guy 17 years of age he doesn't yet have the skill or the stamina but he'll develop it but the gutsy thing is that he didn't lay off he had another track at the end where he tried to get on the back end and Beddoes Beddoes coming around that back 200 well it's a it's a it's a, the Cook Islanders were very very confident that uh, Alex Beddoes was preparing well in Auckland. And they weren't wrong, were they? Ah, the excitement of it all. We've got some... We've got some uh, very, very good 100-metre semi-finals coming up soon, too. And this is where the Fiji runner starts to tie up. Orovo, you can see, coming over the top of him. And now Beto is just sitting off the back of him. Just find something a little bit extra. A beautifully timed race, this from Beto's. Holds off until the last 100 and then just begins to stride out. Well, he's, he is by far the fastest in this field. He's done 151. Uh, when he was living in New Zealand, training full-time in New Zealand. So he knows where to go to come up with the goods. Got another medal ceremony now. This is the gold medalist being saluted, silver and bronze, in the men's javelin. To Masiva, Samoa, Tamani. Nasawa Vanuatu in third place in the men's javelin.
So again, a historic moment here for Vanuatu, uh, getting on the podium in the men's javelin. And as Bob was saying earlier on, perhaps this held something very big for the future. I think it does. Uh, uh, the fact that uh, we're looking at Vanuatu athletes in many different disciplines. Uh, I want to see how they maintain that by May next year when the rest of the Melanesian teams come into this stadium to challenge the home team. It'll be exciting. And those of you that are watching in television land, you get down to this stadium over the next three days to see some of the best and most exciting athletes around the Pacific and see how your team Vanuatu can take them on and occasionally, m on many occasions, better them, best them, and bring home the gold. It's been a while since uh, Samoa won the Javelin gold medal. They're normally shot put, people like Shaka Sola, you know, Emanuele Fuamatu, Alex Rose, but not in the Javelin. A little bit of history being made here at the mini games as Samoa wins the men's javelin. Tui Masave there from Samoa, head of Tamani from Fiji, and Nasawa from Vanuatu, our winners in the men's javelin earlier on today here. And uh, with the great uh, Mr. Copeland not here from Fiji, concentrating on bigger things perhaps at the Commonwealth Games, a chance for the next generation of throwers to uh, make themselves known and. Uh, Good to see that uh, things are happening. Yes, it's uh, it's interesting that when these medal ceremonies are, are on, things come to a halt. I remember once in 1978 at the Commonwealth Games, uh, the hammer throwers wanted to continue throwing during the medal ceremony, but it was endangering the life of Queen Elizabeth II, so they politely requested that they stop throwing. They did. Just getting some updates as well, Bob, from that 400 meters hurdles. We saw the two heats earlier on, indeed. And uh, Ephraim Lurkin qualifying second fastest in the 400 hurdles behind Moen Boino, 52.44. So Lurkin goes into the final with a 53 flat. I think that you'll find that those times are irrelevant. You're probably right, Mr. Snow, but hey, I like a good story <laughs> when I see it, okay? I understand completely. And that is, you know, it shows how fired up Moen Boino is. He wants to go out big time. But if he wins here, he won't go out. He'll continue to fight another day on the Gold Coast next year, possibly. Jeff Heather Vanuatu also making that final. Fotofili from Tonga, Pui from Tonga as well, Rarasia from Fiji, 
and then the two Vanuatu, or the three Vanuatus, actually, the Vanuatu uh, athletes through to the final of the men's uh, 400 hurdles, and that's Tamathua and also Gillesi as well. So congratulations, Vanuatu. Three runners through to the final of the men's 400 hurdles. That uh, at the moment, our money on the big boys from Papua New Guinea, Moam Boino and Ephraim Lurkham for the final of the 400. Should be a classic. I know that Papua New Guinea will be hoping to uh, regain some of the prestige that they lost in the 800s. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see how the rest of the program goes. Uh, all of the countries have come here with an aim to win a certain number of gold medals. Um, I know I've been pressed by many people to predict, and any of my predictions I call foolhardy and brave. <laughs> Who can tell? Apologies to Sir John Tawanikura, who would like a more accurate reflection of reality. I can't give it to you at the minute, sir. We're getting a good crowd here now, and quite rightly so. would like to see far more people in the days ahead. Uh, all of the gold medal events, all of the big, big events, the final of the men's and the women's 100. There's a lot coming up over the, over the next few days. The 200s, the 400s, a fantastic variety of field events. But I know most people get very excited by the track, the track events. And tomorrow we've got the 100 finals, and then we're into the 400s, the 200s, and then the realize is sensational. Second last day and the last day, the 4x1s and the 4x4s. You can now look at serious attempts by Vanuatu to win the medals in the relays. Serious attempts. They've always been very good at getting the bronze medal, but now they can possibly shift their sights a little higher. Not too far away as well from uh, a couple of uh, semis in the men's 100 as well, Bob. That should be pretty good. It certainly will because I'm looking at the flags. They're very, very gently flying in the breeze, I'd say. Any negative wind is almost irrelevant. Quickest qualifier in the first of the semis we're going to see is this Kelvin Marcel from uh, Samoa. Yes. He comes in with a 10.84. He's the only runner to have gone sub 11 in qualifying here today. It will be more serious in the, in the semifinals, much more serious. As they know that uh, first, second, and third automatically qualify for the final, and then the next two fastest times. So even if they're coming fourth or fifth in their race, they know that they're to put the pedal down because they might get to the final by time, not necessarily by place. We were hearing the other day that uh, a drone w it will eventually be brought into action if the conditions are adequate. Um, and that would be fantastic to see a drone following the people down the 100 meters or around the track. Women's 100 meters. Preliminaries. The women's will just have uh, straight heats and then to a final. In the first one, we've got Stephanie Teha from Solomon Islands. We've got Gail Storm Dawe from Nauru. Um, we've got uh, Vailua Etuate Mafiti from Samoa. Eleanor Silosi, Fiji. Afure Ada from Papua New Guinea. And uh, Liza Malares from Vanuatu. The ones with the big names are Eleanor Silosi and also Afure Ada, but who knows what Vanuatu has got hidden, ready to surprise everybody. Wondering about uh, the Samoan representative, Bob Etuate. 
I don't know anything. Um, a lot of the countries have not been putting their results into the wider public sphere. So a lot of the runners will come here with absolutely no known pedigree. We don't know what they're capable of doing. Normally, what every country should do is give a season's best to the organizers so they can seed the heats properly to make sure you don't accidentally put all the good people in the one heat. But none of the countries are providing seeding information, so we're just having to hope and guess that we don't make a mistake in the heats and put too many of the good ones in the same heat. Well, we do know that uh, Patricia Tayer from uh, Cook Islands is going in heat number three in this women's. Uh, we do know that Toya Whistle from Papua New Guinea is going in heat number two. And uh, we're having a look at uh, Sayalossi here. Perhaps Fiji might be no, the... I, I would say uh, Fure Ada. Those three that we've mentioned are the only ones to have been under 12 seconds. So you like uh, Ada here from Papua uh, New Guinea, do you? Afure, yeah. She's just come from Minnesota. She's rather glad to be out of the snow and the cold. Uh, she arrived yesterday. Wow. And, uh, but she's been running very well on the indoor circuit. So the women's 100 not too far away. Helen, Eleanor Silosi is a perennial uh, representative for, Papu, uh, for Fiji. Fiji. She's been, uh, she started out as one of their great school runners and she's continued it into early adulthood. She's a very good runner. I would imagine she would uh, then progress to the final, but who knows? Who else is lurking in the shadows? That was Ada there. Just had a, saw a glimpse of her. 187. Gale Storm. There's 127. That's uh, Sialosi. Eleanor Sialosi from uh, Fiji. Running in lane five. So view down the track on the inside is Tehe from Solomons. She's going to be in two. Gale Storm Daio from uh, Nauru in three. Etuate Samoa in four. Sayalose in five from Fiji. Ada, who uh, Bob is backing in, is in lane number six. And Melrez Vanuatu is closest to us in lane number seven. Yes, it's about to be introduced to the crowd. Afure Ada on the basis of what she did last week indoors. There's Ada there. to representing Solomon Island, Stephanie Teha. Teha Solomon's in lane two. Dale from Nauru in three. Etuate Samoa in four. Sayalose five Fiji. Ada Papua New Guinea is running in six. And Melrose Vanuatu in seven. In lane 5, Apol Fiji, Alonora Solosi. Alonora just acknowledging the crowd here at Kornaman uh, Stadium. Lane 7, Kornaman Stadium, Liza Melrez. Big, uh, big welcome for this girl, Liza Melrez. She's going to be running closest to the big crowd here in a Kornaman this afternoon as well. Ladies and gentlemen, we ask you to be quiet for the start of the 100 meters. First of three heats, semi-finals, semi women's. Michael of course, the fantastic Fiji runner with the championship record 11.55. Don't think we'll be going quite close to that today, although the conditions absolutely perfect for first of the heats here. He's looking at the flags on the other side. It's marginally following them. So it's going to be interesting to see. for a start women's semis and they're away and racing good start as well by Ada out in lane number six is traveling well at the moment looking good Ada's got the goods Ada it is Mares there as well not too bad Sarah Lossi Fiji 
but uh, Ada doing the job. He, she strolled over the line, Eleanor Silosi second, and Malarez was third. That's, uh, that's pretty much what one would have expected. I'd say all three will go ahead, but we've got to wait and see. Only first and second automatically will go on to the final. There's our winner then from the first heat, just uh, going to get confirmation. Many people think that she will ultimately be the one who replaces um, Toya Whistle as the number one, although the Patricia Tyre has uh, been around for a very, very long time. Mal Rez, I must say, Van White had a great start, and Ada eventually had the leg speed just to run it down. You can see the Fiji girls, Silosi, they're just holding on for a third place. Back live, this is the second heat. While, while we're waiting for the second heat, uh, just to give you uh, the result of the men's high jump was Malakai Kaiwalu from Fiji, 2.06. Peniel Richard, Papua New Guinea, 2.03. Mosese Foliaki, Tonga, two meters. That's why he didn't want to go into the um, 400 hurdles. Roland Hure from Papua New Guinea, 1.94. Lataisi Mwea from Kiribati, 1.91. And the winner of the, of the women's long jump, it was a Papua New Guinea, 1, 2, 3. Rally Kaputin, 6.40 meters. Unfortunately, with a 3.3 meter tailwind. But that's a very, very good jump. Um, Annie Topal, Papua New Guinea, 5.68 was second. And Adrian Monaghi from Papua New Guinea, third, 5.59. So Vaya Vusona, Fiji, 5.56. Miriama Senokonoko from Fiji, 5.40. And then Jeanette Wakapo from New Caledonia, 5.26. Asinate Kasowanga, Fiji, 5.24. And Liza Malrez Vanuatu, 5.20. Well, that's a a clean sleep, a sweep for Papua New Guinea and a good gold medal for Fiji in the men's high jump. Both going according to the form guide. So here we are then introducing you to the uh, next runners in this women's heat. Faula from Samoa running in lane number two. Terra Defending champion, sprint queen of the Pacific, runs in lane number three. Kalapong Vanuatu will be next to in lane number four. Nalu from Fiji in five. There's Nalu. Bulala from Guam is in lane number six. And it looks like a girl from Kiribati is going to be there. Buriti is out, so it's down to six runners. Well, one would have to say Toyo Whistle from Makareta Naulu with Vanuatu being the big question mark. So Kapalong running in four from Vanuatu. Toyo Whistle. I'll tell you what, the way these Samoans have been running as well, though, Bob, you just never know. Claudia Faula in lane two. Whistle three. Kapalong four from Vanuatu. Naulu Fiji is in lane number five. Bulala Guam, lane number six. The retreat from Kiribati is a late withdrawal. Very difficult to see the start from our position, unfortunately. It's been troubling us all day. Toya Whistle normally nails it at the start. She's a great exponent. And now cameras are in the way. We've got no view of the start. We've had a problem all day with this. And a great start as well by Toya Whistle as Simone is gone. But look at this from Fiji. But Toya Whistle holding on. Not too bad at all. Nalu Fiji just accompanying her over the line. Toya Whistle a little bit of a stroll. Surprised to see Falu from Samoa beaten within the first 20. No doubting our winner, Toya Whistle. And Nalu from Fiji just going up alongside her for a bit of a run. Toya Whistle looks like she's in pretty good nick to me, but Bob, you're still not convinced, are no, you? No, no, over the 100, there was never any doubt. That was a stroll in the park. A 12.04 for uh, Makareta Naulu. Makareta is the, the Fiji number one 
quite convincingly last year and this year. So they're the automatic qualifiers. 12.65 for the third place getter. So it's going to be very interesting. And the wind was plus 1.0. So that was almost perfect for them. They'll look for a wind like that in the final and they will feel blessed. Well, there's the start again. And as you say, Toy Whistle, a great exponent. But look at the way uh, Fiji gets away there. Nalu going extremely well perhaps just giving uh, whistle just a little bit of a thought around the 40 meter mark but then whistle just uh, she just slowed down she jogged over the line when she needs to she can just turn it on so we have one more heat then in this women's and that will be patty tire from the cook islands well is it her time i it's very hard to say i can't see her beating Pangolinen then is going to be out in lane number two. Young uh, member of this uh, Sinemai race group that are down here. Malamut from Papua New Guinea goes in three. Sapong from Northern Mariana. has got two uh, Sinemai runners in this particular heat. Haga from Solomon Islands. And uh, Paddy Ta'ia from uh, Cook Islands is going to be running out of lane number six. And uh, Rosalind Nallen. But uh, I tell you what, Patricia... Uh, Tai would surely be taking some inspiration from what she saw in the men's uh, 800 a little bit earlier on today when uh, Mr. Beddoe's got home to win that. Uh, the team Cook Islands will be on top of the world and, and they're very, very, very much behind Patricia Taya. So just having a look at uh, the starters there, that's... Uh, Tahir there, there, just uh, going through a start routine, just walking back to the blocks. 201, that's Malamut. Sapong is next to her from Sinemai. Haga. Taya then from Cook Islands, running in lane number six. Had a very distinguished international career, Patricia Taya. And uh, Rosalind Nail, closest to the crowd here at uh, the wonderful Corman Stadium. She'll be running in lane number seven. So she'll have them roaring in her ears as she comes down this 100th track for the third and final heat in this qualifier for the women's 100 final. To decide the quickest female in the Pacific this year. Yeah, Patricia Taya, she's done Olympics, Commonwealth Games, World Championships, Pacific Games, Mini Games, Oceania Championship. She's done it all. Mm -hmm. see how and she she's improving, she was still improving, and that's wonderful. She is indeed. So this is the third and uh, final heat. Top I two through. Tair in six, Haga five, Sapong four, Malamut three, Pangelinen in two. And they're away and racing and a good start actually by Nalan from Vanuatu. Tyre now beginning to make a move on her shoulder. Here comes the Cook Islander. She's home. Vanuatu is second. And no. Malamut as well. I thought Malamut. I'm not sure. Lane two. Who was lane, lane two? two was, uh, lane two was Pangelinen. Ah, oh no, no the it, was it, was, it was Malamut. Yeah, was Malamut, the, yeah. They're no doubting our winner. There she is in oh, the picture. Yeah. That's uh, Patricia Tyre. And I thought Nalan did extremely well closest to us as well, Vanuatu. Be interesting to see the uh, replay there, Bob. Yes, uh, but second I, I lane three, and I, then. I had him tie in Nalan and then Malamut. Well, uh, lane three was second, 12.48. Okay. Must be very close. I'd be interested to see how. 12.54 was lane seven. Okay. So that now, and the wind was plus 0 0.3 meters per second. Look how the Vanuatu girl gets away here. This is Nalan beginning to run very close to the uh, crowds here, lane number seven. And then all of a sudden, uh, Patricia Tia begins to really crank it up as she does through this final 60. Bang, over she goes. And there's the dip. Malamut just dipping in front of Nalan then from Vanuatu for Now we've second. got to see which, uh, which one's who were third and fourth in the other races will survive through to the final. But we know the six who qualified either first or second in their heat 
and I guess we're not too far away from the men's semi-finals. Indeed, semi-finals, the first of them not too far away as well. Mento from Vanuatu in one. Andruru Fiji in two. Longarava, Papua New Guinea will run in lane number three. The quickest qualifier with a 10.84 is Maso, Kelvin Maso, running in lane four. Lolton from Vanuatu in five. Lemaki Fiji in six. Diego from Nauru in seven. And Michelle Villas from New Caledonia. But before all that, a medal ceremony, Bob. Well, they're, they're winning all around the place. So we must recognize them, reward them, and give the crowd the opportunity to appreciate what they've done. And their medal ceremony is where it all happens. It's the women's long jump. Clean I can see sweep. three PN, three PNG flags. So they did that in the 2015 games as well. And a warm welcome as well here. This enthusiastic crowd at uh, Horman Stadium, welcoming the three PNG athletes up to the victory dice. Uh, the good news is that. Uh, Relly Kaputin is in great form. A pity about the 3.3 wind aided, but a, a, an incredibly good jump. Adrian is, uh, she's better known as a heptathlete, but she really is now starting to focus on individual events. She's good at the high jump, she's good at the 100 hurdles, so we'll see quite a lot of her in the days ahead. Topal did 5.68. She's better known as a triple jumper, and she'll be fighting with she'll be fighting with the other people for the medals in that triple jump a little bit later in the program. Not today, but in the days ahead. <laughs> Wonderful gesture with the sandalwood that will be planted elsewhere the at the end of the game. Yeah, 
Yes. It's a great tribute to the ecology that they've been given the sandalwood tree. Well done, Relly. Annie and Adrian. But what really has pleased me today is to see the medals being shared around to a great number of countries. Well, you're right, Bob, because that started earlier on today in the 10,000 meters when Solomons took the women's, Vanuatu the men's 10,000, Samoa the men's javelin, Vanuatu the women's 800, Cook Islands the men's 800. Let high jump, Fiji. Long jump, as we've just seen, the women's 800. We've got the shot to go. We've got the men's um, para. I'm sure the shot, the women's shot, they appear to have finished. And if Ashley Bologna hasn't won, I will be incredibly surprised. That is a New Caledonia gold medal, potentially. But we've got to find out for certain. What we do have is a couple of men down on their uh, blocks getting ready for the first of a couple of semi-finals and the men's uh, 100 here. Going to be a classic as well because this is going to bring together the quickest men that in qualifying got through to the semis today, including Longorava from Papua New Guinea going to run in lane number three and Kelvin Maso Samoa in lane number four. In this particular heat, we'll have Mento Vanuatu in one, Radan Bruger from Fiji in two. Longareva will be in three, Maso in four, Lolton in five, Lamaki Fiji in six, Daegyo from Nauru in seven, and Michelle Villez from New Caledonia closest to us in lane number eight. And the women shot putters have just been led off the ground by the president of Oceania Athletics, Jeff Gardner from Norfolk Island. Good to see him out there doing his hard yards as well, taking some of the load and helping out some of the uh, volunteers around here. So there's our start list then in the men's 100. This is the first of the two semis. Quickest guys to look out for, lane number four, Kelvin Masso, qualified fastest with a 10.84, and Longorava, 10.86. Everybody over the 11 mark. From MC just introducing the runners in this first semi final to the crowd here, the enthusiastic crowd. That was Steve Lawson there. This is uh, Tony Lamarki from Fiji. 
The gang off from uh, Nauru, running in lane number seven. That's Michelle Villas. But our attention is likely to be on lanes three and four. Lanes three and four are going to be our guys to keep an eye on. So top three in each plus the two next best. So these guys will be ring, running for places, Bob. Well, they certainly will. It's the um, first, second, and third automatically through to the final, and the next two fastest on times. The favoured lanes are three, four, five, and six, so we'll wait and see if they are the people who lead out. Mento, Ngurudu, Ongoreva, Maso, Fastest qualifier in four. Malton, Lalton, Lemarki in six. Aguero, Nauru in seven. And Michelle Villers in eight. Closest to us. They're running in the first of the semis, and it looks like they've got a fantastic start. Longoreva is there also. Masso is going hard. Longoreva on his shoulder. Masso is holding him off. Longoreva is going to get him on the line. Longoreva, Masso there. Rudrudu as well, I really think, ran pretty well, but uh, it was Longoreva, Papua New Guinea, ahead of uh, Kelvin Masso, Samoa. Be very interested to see the uh, highlight here. Well, lane three. 10.73. That's Longoreva. He got it. He just shaded Masso. That's Ten close to his season's best. 10.73 as well for this guy. Lane four. Yep, Masso. So we had him right. Longoreva first ahead of Masso from Samoa. Then I got a feeling that maybe... Rudd and Drudu might have just snuck up on the inside. Lane four, the second. Randrundru would be one of the people favoured to go through to the Masso final. Masso was second then. Yes. So that was Masso finishing in second place in a 10 point Third lane five. Okay, that was Lawton and Vanuatu getting into third place. Okay, so Here's a replay then. Look at this start. Longoreva really beginning to hold the Samoan. Samoan beginning to have to work hard. On his outside is Lalton as well from Vanuatu. Here is Masso beginning to street them at the moment, but then all of a sudden Longareva from about here starts to stretch out. Look at that beautiful stripe pattern, just shading the Samoan. Yes, Wesley Logareva was quite in control there. He's also a very good 200-metre runner. Beautiful running by the PNG runner, just shading the uh, Samoan into second place. So the second of the semis on their way. We got Nauru, Samoa, Vanuatu, Fiji, Papua New Guinea got two runners in this. New Caledonia's yeah. got one. In fact, Nauru's got two. In the in the last uh, semi-final, the wind reading was plus 0 0.8 meters per second. Oh, they love it when it's behind them. A plus rather than a minus. So that was a very, very good one. So in this heat, we've got Harris, Nauru and one. Avui uh, Samoa in two. Simeon Vanuatu is in three. Aaron Powell runs out of lane number four. Looked fantastic in the Oceania Championships. Don't think we've seen his best hit yet. Just ran no. within himself in the first of the qualifiers. Yes, yeah, so it'll be a, a very, very tight one. Um, Nazmi, Nazmi Lee, Aaron. Mari from five. Alexandre, New Caledonia out of six. Whistle is in seven, and Jeremiah from Nauru in lane number eight. <coughs> There's our starters. Aaron Powell in lane number four really has got the credentials here to run away with this. Certainly at the Oceania is earlier on this year, looked absolutely sensational for I, Fiji. I don't think he'll run away from Nazmi Lee. Nazmi Lee was second in the 100 in Oceania, only two hundredths of a second behind Jeremy Dodson. There is uh, Simeon from Vanuatu. Pal. Now the question mark is what will Vanuatu do? Marai then in 202, running out of five. In lane six, representing New Caledonia, David Alexandre. 
Alexandrine is out of six. Very famous surname, Russell Papua New Guinea in seven. So the MC reminding everybody, top three in this heat, plus the next two best, through to the final, the men's 100. Paris, Avui, Simeon, Pau, Marie, Alexandrine, Whistle, and Jeremiah, Nauru, Samoa, Vanuatu, Fiji, Papua New Guinea, New Caledonia, PNG, Nauru, closest to us. Could be a big Fiji, Papua New Guinea tussle. This in lanes four and five. Pau just bouncing around there, Marie on his right. Simeon on his inside, Vanuatu in three. Fantastic start here. It looks like the big Fiji runner Pal going extremely well. It was looked impressive in the Oceanias and once again going to do it here. Two PNG boys in close proximity. But Pal it is. Marie, I think, in second place. But uh, pretty tight over the line, but got a fantastic start. I was just impressed with him at the Oceanias, Bob, with his starting ability, this guy. Uh, you mean this year's, this year's Oceania? Yeah. yeah. He's, all he, he's, his starting at the Oceanias was just impeccable and um, you put that together with a good technical run and um, so here are runners of the Pal <coughs> looked fantastic from the get go great start and you just held it together Simeon and uh, Marie were going to have a crack at him, but uh, he just held them off beautifully. The start from Powell once again, just sensational. I'm in shock. The, the women's shot put final. Yes. <laughs> uh, Tonga, one, beat the unbeatable Ashley Bologna. Well, you were, <laughs> here's the start again. Just have a look at Powell, just the way he gets out of the blocks. He's already got half a meter on everybody. Yes. He is just sensational over that first 30. He should be running indoors in Europe or North America or something, this guy. Over 60 meters. He's fantastic. And just easing up there. Yes, he eased up tremendously. First, second, and third automatically going on. Third, lane seven. 